Um, so that was a quesadilla. 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 Quesadillas. And welcome to another episode of 72 Pin Connector. With us this week, we have the great and mighty dancing off screen, Tom. No. Adam. <laughs> yes. And Josh. Maybe. Good answer. Good, 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 good answer. So finally, <laughs> yes, we, we are be more back. Positive. We are finally <laughs> back with all four of us again, with us once again splintered all over the fucking country because, you know, why not? That's how we do. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, <laughs> how we do. How's your uh, week's been going, fellas? So good. So good. Busy. So good. Fucking so busy. busy. Tom's is more busy. Well, Tom's fucking you know, busies. Tom's on the travel, <laughs> you know. I yeah. am. I I have all of the travel, one hundred percent traveling. Nice. <laughs> That's all. All the cool. travels are belong to you. <laughs> so we come to you from sunny, humid, swampy Washington D.C. Lovely. Oh, the way you gotta oh. love it. Uh, like I finally realized why I left this side of the country. It fucking sucks here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What do you mean? Like, it sucks? Even getting off the airplane and stepping into the airport, and the airport has eighty percent humidity. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> shitting you. I stepped off of the plane onto the carpet of the airport, and my mm -hmm. glasses fogged up. Oh, yeah, come on. Humidity is the worst, yeah. man. This, that's, that wasn't at like, you know, four in the afternoon. This was two in the morning. Nice. And it was 80% humidity. No. No. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just... leaving as soon as I can. Nice. Which, good, speaking dude, of, I... when is the next time we can expect you as in person in here with you and I sharing a news desk? Maybe uh, Saturday? D if Okay, so... With United, at least you'll get there. Like, they'll beat the shit out of you, but you'll get yeah. to your destination <laughs> roughly yeah, was on pretty, time. I was pretty roughed up last time. Yeah. yeah. But but with Delta, you might not make it at all. I had a six-hour <laughs> layover. Six was, hours? That it was sucks. supposed to be 50 minutes. Oh, man. What yeah. was the reasoning? It was, it was good times. Uh, a thunderstorm moved through at uh, the speed of snot. So, uh, yeah. Oh, that shit sucks. It was annoying. It was really annoying. And then, then of course, I did the smart thing and I got a rental car, so I had to drive while oh. being extremely tired at two in the morning in a place I've never been before. Uh, that's oh, the of best. Course. What's yeah, wrong with swamp that? air. Swamp air. <laughs> that's, how you get, that's how you get good at driving, swamp man. Swamp air. It's gonna I mean, put yourself through the hardships. <laughs> if, you, if you don't hit five cars, you're doing good in that situation. Just look at it that way. I guess that's true. <laughs> also, fuck toll roads. Like this shit's yeah, annoying. Yeah, that's oh, dumb. I, I, I toll swear, roads are I, so stupid. I screw up toll roads more often than probably anybody. Like I think I think I've, I've been charged for so. Many, I'm like, oh, cool carpool, and I'm like, I zoom in there. I'm like, this is the best. <laughs> and then I get a bill. And like, oh, it wasn't carpool. So uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. When I first moved out to Seattle, I had a rental car on the company's dime. So it wasn't mm -hmm. that I paid for it and it got expensed. The company that was hiring me in paid for it all up front. So mm -hmm. when I'm driving and there's this nice, there's two bridges that go across Lake Washington, 520 and I-90. I-90 is free, but you have to go all the way south, then across, then all the way north to get where you're going. Or you can mm -hmm. go right across the toll bridge. Well, fuck, man. <laughs> it's all done via mail, so I went across the toll bridge. All of a sudden, um, <laughs> National sends me, hey, um, you went over these toll bridges X times. We're just going to build a card on the account. And I'm like, yes, it's not <laughs> oh, me. <man. laughs> I win. That's perfect. That's, That's awesome. awesome. Uh, so what about you, Josh? Yeah. You've been up to much this week. Oh, yeah. So I've, uh, as you noticed in the previous cast, I was been crashing a lot. It's been mm -hmm. super fun. It's, it's a great experience. You should try it. Um, so like just pretty much every single time I'd go into a game at random intervals, it would crash. I could be playing, you know, uh, battlegrounds, I'd be driving a car down the road with everybody in it, going full throttle. And then I crash and everyone would be barreling down the road, full throttle into a tree. <laughs> <laughs> There's no stopping me. Um, yeah. So like, it was really bad and it got really, really bad. So like 
I just ended up getting a new motherboard, CPU, and uh, RAM, and now now I'm here in a fresh thing. So hopefully it doesn't crash during this cast because that would mean I'm very angry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. Oh, yeah, it didn't happen. Man. Okay. Yeah, like it would have been so awesome. unfortunate, but it would have been really funny if it happened. Yeah, right there. <laughs> <laughs> really so those of you who were oh, here with us last week have been noticed it did happen during the cast last week. It did, yes. and the week before that. Yeah. Which is which and is in the middle of in the middle of ranked games and oh yeah mm-hmm. in the middle of uh oh what was it the one time we were playing battlegrounds and you were driving the car and you yeah, crashed and saying. the car <laughs> yeah. the car kept going it like it was holding gas the whole time <laughs> right yeah <laughs> we, we awesome. ended up running into a tree and, fu- and making it out of it somehow. <laughs> RS tried to jump out. He jumped yeah. out and got an and, and, and died. <laughs> and then we hit a tree and like back flipped and it was moving slow enough to jump out without dying. <laughs> no, it would have been great. You hit a tree, it turns you around, and you start driving the other way across the map. <laughs> right. Oh my God. You just couldn't Rubber stop. trees. <laughs> and just best, redirect you. The best thing yeah. is, Josh, you got a kill, and none of them told you. You like, completely destroyed some dude while yeah. you were doing it. Oh, did I? <laughs> oh, no. What if you recently? What if you crashed driving a car? What if you crashed in a solo match driving a car, and the car kept going, and it killed the last guy? Yeah, then you hit the. Uh, what, hmm. what happens? Does so the game you would just win uninstall itself or without you would being win there. that'd be awesome that'd be yeah. so would it give you the win because when people crash out they don't really count towards you would no stuff. one would get the win no one would get the win but because what that would guy it say? lost it's what would it place? actually say based on whatever what? code is in place right now what if question. you make best friends with the last guy in the match and you two just stand there hugging until the very end <laughs> You start oh, taking like, damage. Uh, you have to keep medding up until someone dies because the way I understood it, eventually there's no safe zone. No, that's oh, not true. Yeah. Really? It's not? Th- no, that's not true. No, no, no. The very last uh, safe zone, the smallest one, it doesn't change size. Oh. It just sticks. It just stays there and you got to ride it out. But you're like, oh. you know, shoulder to shoulder with the dude at the end. You, you guys have to like yeah. powwow or something until one of you just like, I don't know dies of attrition or something like that. <laughs> Longest match ever. That would dies be of dysentery. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that's what uh, that's what Arash just pointed out. It's uh, <laughs> it's extreme. It's just you two man. left. You have to repopulate the island. <laughs> you have to save humanity. <laughs> yeah, in that little area, we also have to figure out how to get rid of the toxicity and yeah, build a yeah, house yeah. and get some it's food. A, it's a really hard yeah. problem to solve. It's a really romanticized <laughs> version of Battlegrounds. <laughs> yeah. Did did you any of you guys play Battlegrounds this week? I didn't even play. I didn't even launch no. the game this week. I, I, I crashed. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I played pre patch and um, I was kind of disappointed because I wanted to get out there because this week they released the Glock. Oh, did oh, they, that update happen? Yeah. That was Thursday. Nice. Yeah. And um, they, it's oh, another okay. nine millimeter pistol. I don't know where it is on the damage. Oh, reading, yeah. But it's an automatic pistol. Oh, isn't it? you said the Glock. I thought you said the clock. It's like the clock. Oh it's the clock. It's like, yes. like you can go in there like wearing a big ass clock on yeah, your like chain. Slave, yeah. slave, yeah. slave, man. It, 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 deflects, it deflects chest shots just like slave the band does. That would be great. If you like the, yeah, exactly. Like the pan in the chest. It's that slave satisfying grounds. resounding bing when the pan yeah, saves your life. But, but this one would go like dong. No, no, yeah, no, it would like be an alarm clock, clock yeah. when it got hit. It would just like ding. All right. That's going to be crazy. So but anyway, that's that's what I've been up to. I, I got mm. around to some uh, some games, but really it's just been like kind of waiting, playing little games until I crash. So mm-hmm. really didn't play much PC games this week. Just been struggling with that. Did get around to some PlayStation. We'll get that a little later, though. That's a bummer, mm-hmm. man. But at least you're fixed. I you am. Are fixed. I'm fixed. I can no longer nice. have children. Yes. The world, no, is better, the world is a better place. <laughs> oh, savage. No, no, I joke, I joke. What about you, Tom? You were on the travel. I know you got a switch, so that had to help some, but I know that probably also made it a little hard to uh, get a little flavor in there. Um, not as much as you would think. And I love that you made a pun out of Battlegrounds Flavor Town. Thank you. Um, so, uh, not as much as you would think, because I had the same thought. Uh, first off, Buying the Switch, day one, full mm-hmm. price, totally 100% worth it. Uh, especially if you're getting on a plane and you're going to be locked in a shitty hotel room for two weeks. But is it <laughs> um, worth it to wait yeah. two weeks miserably wishing you had one and then buy it for full price? Yeah, I mean... As maybe, long as you get it at some point, it's yeah. worth it. <laughs> so, so I have been playing 
Let me, uh, <clears throat> let me just, hold on, how's that, there, there, how's yeah, that logo look? Gotta get the Switch cam in. <laughs> yeah. oh, Sorry, I'm just checking my, my games here. Does, does the Nintendo copyright show up okay there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Fine. <laughs> Good. That's great. Um, so, uh, so, <laughs> so, uh, no, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've been playing, uh, send me Nintendo games. Um, I've been playing <laughs> a lot of Breath of the Wild. I'm actually making measured progress. Um, but I talked a whole lot about that. I uh, got some Mario Kart in. Um, I bought Cave Story Plus um, yesterday, and I've been going through that. It's, what is that? I've, Cave, that uh, sounds familiar. I've never heard of it. I don't know what it is. It's a very old, well, I don't want to say very old. Mm -hmm. Um... It's an older indie game. Um, it has come out for virtually every platform, everywhere. Okay, I can say very old. It's 13 fucking years old. That's old in gaming years. Ancient. Yeah. 13 expletive. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> so, uh, that, that, that's the original Cave Story. Cave Story Plus uh, was re-released... Um, man... 2010, 2011, around there. Anyway, the point is, it's pretty fucking old. Uh, it plays sort of like a Metroidvania with different weapons, and you can level up, but you don't level up your dude. You level up your guns. And oh, when nice. you get hurt, you take health damage, but you also lose XP for your guns. Oh, cool. So, oh. If, if you're getting your Ooh. ass kicked constantly, you will level down your guns and make the fight harder on yourself. Oh, which that's is, a... Isn't that a vicious kind of brutal? Because yeah. if, yeah. You're, it's, if it's, you're doing it's so bad, effect. you're getting hit, and then you're going to start doing worse because your gun sucks. So you're getting hit more. So yeah. I mean, it's a vicious it's cycle to suck. It's a it's a Dark Soulsian approach. Right? I mean, it's yeah. worse than Dark Souls. It'd be like if you die with zero souls on Dark Souls, you lose shit you've already purchased. That would be what it'd be like. I mean, like I mean, well, in Dark you Souls, do, you lose kinda. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, well, you, your max HP bar goes lower yeah. the more yeah, you but. die. Because you know Dark Souls, but you yeah, don't lose yeah. like your weapons. You, your weapons don't get weaker. Yeah, they do. Oh, uh, do they, they do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. there's yeah. weapon degradation. But no, that's not yeah. from getting hit. That's from you using it. Wow. Yeah, that'd be uh, awesome. Yeah, weapon degradation is my favorite mechanic in games. Oh I yeah, hate <laughs> weapon it's, degradation. It's really too. good. I really do. It's, it's really really good in, in the new Monster Hunter that's coming. Well, it, it was good in Monster Hunter. I hope it's as good in this next Monster Hunter. Like. You you have to like sharpen your weapon like mid fight, <laughs> yeah, so like well, you're like, just dodging around someone, and then you have to like you have to find like a little crevice. Wait, to hang, sharpen on, hang on, wait. It well, doesn't yeah, take too like, long though. <laughs> fix my weapon. It, it does takes, take long. It takes it about totally two seconds. Takes, two seconds is a long ass time when you have a thing charging at your face. Yeah, you just switch. Two you seconds then, is death in Dark Souls. The secret yeah. is you just go to the yeah. next zone, and on that next zone, as soon as you enter, you sharpen, and then you go back to that zone. A rookie mistake. He runs away. Oh, is he coming after you, or are you oh, going after him? Oh, shit. You have to go after him. That's the, you're, you're hunting monsters. You are a monster hunter. Well, that is, your, <laughs> that is your job. The thing is, you have some that are aggressive and chase you. Right. But then some hunting. that'll go under. But, like, even the other ones, like, go underground. Like, the worst one was this one that was, like, a shark, and it would, like, it, a sand shark, right? And then you'd, like, you'd fight it, and then you'd just dive underground and, like, disappear. And you're like, okay, that's that. It's like, where the fuck did you go? <laughs> Good fight. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, your time runs out, and then you have to just come back and try again. It's the worst. Paintballs, baby. Paintballs. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there, there must be Sorry. something absolutely wonderful about Cave Story, because it keeps getting re-released, remastered, uh, and resold on every platform imaginable. That's um, and it's... <laughs> yeah. um, I'm waiting for Cave Story on the Genesis, which actually it would run on a Genesis really well. Hmm. Um, nice. This game, it's I haven't gotten far enough into it to give like a definitive. This is good. This is not. Um, initially, I like it. It's good. Nice. Is it thirty bucks good? Oh yeah. what? Yeah, 30. for a thirteen-year-old game. Yeah. Holy crap! Yeah, fuck that. Yeah. No, um, I don't think so. That's so, is this on the Switch? Yes. Okay. That's the problem, right? Well, yeah, it's that's the Switch what the premium. Price is. Yeah, oh, that's brutal. I hope I hope you don't get the same thing with Undertale. I really hope you have you played Undertale, Tom? Oh, I've beaten Undertale. Oh, I am oh, very good. very familiar with Undertale. He is very yes. well versed in Undertale. Yes. 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 For for listeners and watchers of the stream, if you have not played through Undertale, don't Google a goddamn thing about it. Don't Absolutely go to Wikipedia. Not. Don't don't like. 
don't even read anything on the fucking Steam page. Just yeah. go to the page, focus it on the buy button, and buy it now. I don't mm-hmm. care what price it is. There's a Steam sale on. Just go fucking buy it. It's honestly one of the best indie games I've ever played. I, uh, I it's would really con- good. Yeah, I would consider it one of the best RPGs I've ever played. In the it's, top, in the top five, top three, maybe probably yeah. top three, top three RPGs I've ever played. I would it agree. is, it is a really good, really good. It, it does stuff that I had never seen before in gaming. Um, just oh my god, so fucking good. But anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. go buy so, Undertale. So, so Tom, um, I want to push you into something real quick because I have questions because I am interested. Yes. Fucking arms, you have it. You're. Yes. I want to. I want to preface this before you even start. You are typically not the guy who would enjoy arms. That is no, not your cup of tea. So now my question no. is, how is it? So. ARMS, for those who don't know, is a new Nintendo game, and that's that's really the thing that pushed me over the edge. Um, and I fucking hate that Nintendo has this way of saying, hey, we released a steaming pile of shit, Tom. $200. And I'd be like, will you take four? <laughs> yes, thank you. Wow, this is the best shit I've ever seen. Um, that said, <laughs> ARMS is good. Uh, it's a competitive, wannabe, esports-ish title fighting game by Nintendo with weird characters and the first in a brand new Nintendo IP. I like it. I really like it. Mm. Um, There's definitely some things it could do better. Uh, The single player is like playing the single player mode in any other fighting game. It's uh, it's worthless. (laughs) Um, It's it's good to get the controls. It's good to work on combos. your characters have different uh, weapons on their springy arms, so you can switch out one that's a boomerang with one that's rockets in horizontal mode versus rockets in vertical mode versus a big-ass fist versus, like, a <laughs> giant ball that shocks people. Mm-hmm. And then you can have different uh, weapons or different types of arms on each arm. So hmm. you can have something fast with something slow to get, you know, the person staggered and then go in for the kill. Um, it's... Is there- is there synergies with them? Like I saw in one, yes. uh, there's like, if you do two lightning, it'll have like a little lightning wire in between them. Right? That's actually a grab. Oh, it's a grab. Okay. Okay. Yes. I was wondering if there was, I saw a little bit of it. So I, yeah, when you, I know this much when you punch at the same exact time, you're actually doing a grab. Yes. Okay. That's cool. Pro strat. That is cool. Pro yeah. strat. Yeah. Top so tier the, MLG. Uh, the, the game really wants you to play with this. And I'm, I'm so glad that I've got props well within reach. Um, It wants you to play with what they call the thumbs up grip, which is you grab your controller, and you grab your controller, and you're giving thumbs up, guys. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) And and they want you to to punch like this and then move your character from side to side and grab and then jump up and dodge. It's... Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's it feels like Nintendo trying to force motion controls again. Yeah, it's okay. Um, but when you start getting into the game, you realize, wow, I can be so much more effective if I use the goddamn buttons, uh, which work really well. Um, I like it. Uh, I do not think it's a sixty dollars game. Um, hmm. Like all fighting games, the single player is worthless. Online is totally where it's at. Uh, they've got oh. a bunch of cool modes. It would make a great party game. Mm. Um, but this is this is a thirty dollar purchase. How um, dare you say that all fighting game single players are worthless? You are out of the time, sir. You are out of the fucking okay, time. Okay, Smash uh, Brothers. Yeah. Smash Brothers aside. No, no, no. Nether Realms. Well, man. I mean, even in, in Injustice was supposed to have yes. a really great Actually, single player story mode that it was had some of the better uh, facial animations from what uh, I've been told. Yes. I mean, I haven't really dug into yeah. that. So here's, I, I mean, here's I, I guess the deal. It's pretty. No, here's the deal with Nether Realms. Since they've done the reboot of Mortal Kombat, they have been knocking out the single story mode. Mortal Kombat 9, <laughs> great. Injustice 1, fantastic. MKX, amazing. And then now Injustice 2 has done so well. It is the number one selling game of last month. Hmm. In the story mode, they put in a e- super easy difficulty just so people can see the story. Oh, Jesus. wow. The, they right. are very story huh. driven. Like, yeah, the Mortal Kombat's always had some, something there for you. Not like always. I mean, in the past, old, yeah. the really old ones, it's like beat that guy up. But I mean, <laughs> but yeah, in Justice, it's the whole like evil Superman story. Like he lost his shit and killed the Joker and then all this shit happens. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. rest assured. ARMS does have a story mode, which is 
Uh, this guy, he's got springs for arms, and this girl's like a cheerleader, but she's got ribbons for arms. Aww. And this person's a Hollywood star, and this guy's like goop. So, he's goop. <laughs> what are you oh, yeah, do? Yeah, he's yeah, goop. The, um, yeah, the what gooey guy. Do? Like when you hit him, yeah. he turns into like a pink pile and then reforms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't okay. know, he's goop. Um, a Sonic and then honestly, again, there's what? a woman that has fucking. She boxes with her hair. Isn't that cheap? Because then, like, she can block with her hands while she's boxing with her hair. <laughs> yeah, that's I, awesome. I actually one, one thing she, I do her, she just whips her hair back and forth. Whips her hair back and forth. You oh, shut Jesus. up. No, mute him. No, mute him. <laughs> what? What? Wait, what? what? <laughs> oh, yeah, you've been revoked. Oh, <laughs> so, podcast right. privileges. Later, guys. It's been it's been for five minutes. <laughs> Bad Josh. I do like. We kind of just figured you'd crash by now, anyway. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Damn savage! Jesus, <laughs> savage! <laughs> oh my god! Do you, do you oh, need to I'm send you a list of burn clinics down in SoCal? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. We'll add that to the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> so you can you can block in arms, which is um, kind of helpful. But what's nice is they they really thought about balance in this game. So hmm. um, the different fighters don't feel all that different to me. Um, you know, some guys are heavy and they don't get knocked down as easy. Some guys are lighter and they can jump around. Um, <laughs> if they're blocking, you can still grab them, which is nice. So you can't just have some guy sitting in the corner and, and blocking everything all day. Yeah, um, that, that's a tech and adaptation that they did to yeah. counter blocking. If if you're desperate for switch games, I. <laughs> um, then arms is not a bad choice, but you should totally, totally wait till it's thirty bucks. Uh, buy mm-hmm. this used. It's not bad. Um, I think Splatoon Two is gonna gonna scratch the competitive edge so much better than arms does. Yeah, and I think it's probably a different competitive edge too, because with arms, I mean, granted, there is that two v two mode. Have you tried that yet? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, what's weird is uh. And, and kind of nice is when you go online, they just throw you in a lobby with a bunch of people. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, I like, saw that. Mm-hmm. Like 10 people. And you've got your little you know character portraits floating around. And like two or three or four of you will all join up. Um, like my first battle is uh, like three people joining up into the central ball. And then like a boss f- character face comes out of the middle. And it's our job to do co-op fights against a computer controlled boss character. Oh, neat. Hmm. Pretty cool stuff. Um, you don't see stuff like that in the single player game at all. Um, that's that's really cool. I was worried about that because I haven't seen it. I've only seen like the duels where people are just fighting each other, 2v2, 1v1. Uh, I thought that was kind of samey. I thought it would get really samey. And especially because you can just kind of like, Rah! you know, uh, yeah. I would worry yeah. that it would just like, there would be no meta to it. It would like, you couldn't really, because right. you don't have like, it doesn't didn't look like you had like, Boom, boom, like really fast control left or right. It looked like you're just kind of punching and then maybe like come to the side either way and then you're punching some more. It, it gets pretty fast. Oh, um, okay. It's, it's got like almost a Smash Brothers in feel where you can sort of muddle around and, and get somewhere, but if you wanted to get really in depth with this, you can. Okay, um, okay. My favorite battles are the three player all for one. Um, ah, free for alls, baby. Yeah, so so you get three people in an arena, and no teams. Somebody dies. Everyone dies. Uh, and that's that's the whole point of the game is just to kill each other. And it is nice. that's ridiculous because you you try to get two people focused on each other, sneak around behind the other guy, and just mm-hmm. punch him in the back of the head. So <laughs> great, this great game fun. seems to me that if it develops a meta, the meta will really come off of very li- some with the characters, but a lot with the um, arms you're using. Oh, absolutely. Um, this is all about the arms. Is this, at, like, how do you get arms? Do you unlock them as you play? Do you have loot crates? Is this a system that can adapt loot crates and make Nintendo's a little bit of cash on some loot? I do not see any microtransactions in this whatsoever. Um, Good. Which is a huge plus for me. They do have loot crate-ish things. Um, now, I've only done this twice, so I don't exactly understand how it goes on, but by playing rounds, uh, single player or online, you get coins, um, and use these coins to launch a mini game. depending on how many uh, coins you put into the mini game determines your time limit, and there you're punching targets and earning points, and eventually present boxes will drop, so you can punch those, explode them, and get arms. Um, luckily, uh, I haven't found any hidden arms. Uh, everything that you get 
you have seen before on other characters. So if you wanted to try uh, a different arm, a different character's got that ability, so you can go and test it out before you know you attach it. You see, I feel that unless they start adding unique arms, the community might fade. Unless it gets really super mm. technical. I don't know if you can get that technical, but if you can't, they've got to inter and like interject arms or yeah. something. Either a progression well, system or an in-depth, uh, what I would, competitive. Right. What I'd be meta. worried about is that there, there's there's got to be a time between when someone can get silly and win, and then at some point there's a line where someone can get really good, like the, the, and beat just absolutely crush the people being silly and flailing their arms yes. around. That's mm -hmm. what I. That's that right there, is what will make the. Uh, what will really make it or break the game because if you if you're all the way up to the pro level before like let's just call it a pro level pro level before you can't like you stop getting beat by people just flailing their arms around then it'll die so i'm i'm gonna give and this is i know we've we've covered arms a lot um <laughs> yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna Not give really the, for a the, new game. <laughs> the last little word uh on arms and make a full amount out of myself and the show by giving the 72 pin connector um kind of futuristic prediction of a new Nintendo franchise. Um, this will be the only ARMS game. It will never mm -hmm. make it as an eSport, and it'll take about three to six months before everyone forgets that this actually existed. I think you're being Dang. generous. Oh. I think Splatoon 2 launches and it eats its lunch. Because Nintendo's well, not known yeah. for competitive mm -hmm. gamers, and yeah. once Splatoon 2 launches, that's where their competitive gamers are going to go. And then that. I just gotta say, probably. I hate Nintendo. <laughs> I've, I've broken so many of my own personal rules. So I bought this game, you know, a couple days after it came out at full price. You did, and then I pre ordered, on. guys. I, I got a timeout, timeout. You paid full price for a physical <laughs> oh, game? No, no, for a physical game that's new. Go to Amazon. No, no, it's not physical. It's not physical. Oh, you went digital? Yeah. I went on the Nintendo eStore and I downloaded it and. Ten minutes later, I had it. And you paid it's eight. magical. Ah, uh, no. If you're going new games, go Amazon. Get that cheap. Yeah, I noticed that after I pre-ordered Splatoon 2. I pre-ordered a game, oh, guys. No. Pre-ordered? I'm sorry. Pre-ordered? Uh, I'm Dang. sorry. It's not out yet, and you paid for it? Yeah, <laughs> I don't even... It's like, they could they could literally send me a box full of shit, but that's what I paid for. What if, Niten what if Nintendo bellies up before Splatoon 2 launches? Yeah, well, I'm glad yeah, I got the last that's, switch. That's the shit that I got the last switch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely gonna happen. <laughs> so oh, um, I have played uh, other games though. Um, yeah, you've been playing Star old Wars shit. Battlefront Two. Star <laughs> Wars Battlefront Two. The original two, um, not two two, one two. Can, can we just give a big, <laughs> a big old? No, no, no! I gotta can point this a, out real quick. EA G -G pisses yeah, me too. off. They are releasing a sequel to a remake that already had yep. a sequel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not a remake it's, it's, of yeah, the sequel. Obviously. It's a sequel there, to the no, remake no. that had it's a sequel. Wiping out, it's wiping a <laughs> canon. Like, like, okay, so like the Jurassic Parks that came out, like the last Jurassic Park is technically Jurassic Park 2. It's not Jurassic Park 10 or whatever they were on. That, <laughs> they're saying that the, the, the other ones were just not canon. They just wiped those away. <laughs> so, so there's like a, oh yeah, that's, that didn't happen. That's probably for but, the best. Uh, yeah, I'm laying true. down a new 72 PC rule. The new Battlefront mm -hmm. will for here on be called Battlefront 2-2. Okay. I agree. Uh, yes. No, no, it's or it's Battlefront Square. Battlefront. No, it doesn't work because a 2-2 would be the sequel to two. No, no when, it's be three. Three, 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 two. So I've been playing Star Wars <laughs> Battlefront 2-1. Um, okay. <laughs> because uh, I've just got my laptop here, and it, it can it can play Counter Strike and Dota, but it doesn't play much beyond that. So mm -hmm. uh, I went to GOG. That's G O G dot com. They might still be having a sale, uh, but this was like five bucks or something like that. So I picked it up. Mm. It's a whole shit ton of fun. Oh my god, I had yeah. no idea because I never got into the series back in the day. Other than oh, playing really? it on oh, really? Battlefront oh, Two. Yeah. Played a lot right. of Battlefield. It's amazing. It's so good. There's multiple classes. You can do space combat. It's got interesting level design. There's good mechanics on both sides of the, of the playing field. It's so yeah. much fun. And you know, uh, you know the best thing is? You're not even playing it at its best. 
you have to play yeah, with other true. people and then it's amazing <laughs> yeah but you can still play no, this yeah. online people still play oh really yeah. 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 yeah you can Where still find it? servers it's on steam too no, 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 no i have it i'm gonna install it I have right it, now i have it on steam wasn't that Dude, a game spy game? let's go <laughs> yeah but game spy like oh you, you were God. able to put in your own your own servers and stuff oh game so they spy. let you okay oh, wow where you, you just you just dated all of us. <laughs> so um, just saying, a yeah, lot of those old games got fucked because when GameSpy went down, yeah. they were running dedicated servers. So yes. unless yeah. the original oh, yeah. authors patched in the it ability is. to host, you can't play online. The, the vast majority of games that I saw using GameSpy um, did. You can put in an IP address. Also, here's GameSpy. And most people use GameSpy, but when it died, I know the Halo CE community all went to dedicated servers that they ran themselves. Um, mm. You can still find Halo CE servers out today. It's a big game. Hmm. That's a good game. Um, so, speaking of uh, old-ass PC shooters um, and uh, in games that use GameSpy, <laughs> I've been playing uh, Medal of Honor Allied Assault. Uh, which Dang, you I, are just throwing it back this week, huh? Yes, he is. I, I know. <laughs> so I I bought this originally when I was a kid, when I bought my uh, my first graphics card, the GeForce MX4. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was a hell of a card. I love that thing. Um, but I forgot how good Medal of Honor was, uh, and I'm really sad to see that the series has basically just shat itself and died. Because um, they made really, <laughs> yeah. really good games. Um, it's nothing to look at today. I mean, it's still running on the original Quake engine, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it's it's a whole lot of fun. Um, I haven't been doing any multiplayer, just single player. Uh, and again, you can find that uh, on GOG. They've got like the whole war chest thing, so you get all the expansion packs back when those were a thing. Uh, yeah, it's good. There, uh, yeah, and I want to point out one fun fact about that. Allied Assault, the creative director of that, had a falling out with the company immediately after that, split off, and actually made the Call of Duty Modern Warfare. Oh, okay. Really? Yes. Oh, really? Wow. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yes. There, um, before we get too into all these other areas that we're going to get into, there's a question I'd like to ask Tom, and that is, there's one game that you need to purchase, and I don't know if you have it already, and it's on sale right now. Do you know what that game is? Because you made a promise to me. Uh-oh. You, I, you oh made a promise to me. It is on sale, isn't it? It is on sale, and we and <laughs> we were going to do this. Yes, we, we do have to do this. I still oh. haven't beaten Dark Souls 2. Doesn't matter. But I think, I think at this point, I'm just going to skip it and go to 3. Maybe yes. I'll come back. I probably won't come back because it's Dark Souls 2. Oh, yeah. I, I, just, I just made my purchase. I have it. So all those with I'm beverages, ready. please take a drink. Mm-hmm. They are talking about Dark Souls. <laughs> I, I, I got you. <laughs> mm. This Dark Souls I'm is so excited. By Wendy's. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Yeah, so I, 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 um, I, for I, those I, who are not in the know, um, Tom had a series on our stream for a while of Tom sucks at Dark Souls. Josh, on the other hand, does. is actually quite good at Dark Souls. So they're going <laughs> to co-op Dark Souls 3 together. In other words, <laughs> Josh is going to carry Tom's ass. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, that's how this know. is going to work. It's been a while. Like I had like I think I had like a thousand hours in it total between systems. My god. Um and Jesus. it was and I, I absolutely loved it. it well, no, bit. I hope <laughs> fuck you put <laughs> a thousand I, hours in it. <laughs> I hate it. it. It was awful. I just I don't know, it was it's it was it's like Dota. It's yeah, like Dota. Yeah, yeah. You just can't walk away. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but I mainly played it on PlayStation to start with until I did the PC port, and then I just like dove super deep into the PC one. But then mm. I used to do um, like when it, when like I got it on release almost for Dark Souls One, uh, and there's nothing like a Dark Souls on release. Unfortunately, we're not riding the release train. So <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, I, did, it, <sighs> It, aren't they coming out with like um, rolling all the DLC into one pack? Because that's when I was going to buy it. Yep, it's they just did it. Oh, they did. So there's a okay. season. There's a season pass right now for uh, with Dark Souls for forty dollars. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm buying that. Yeah, oh. I just got it. So we're we're ready. Like we're we are everything. I, everything is in place. My my computer, knock on wood, is not crashing. <laughs> Yeah, my computer's not crashing. Everything's ready to rock. I, I, I'm ready. Let's go. 
<laughs> nice. As soon as I get back to Seattle, back to my gaming PC, we're totally fucking doing this. I'm, not, I have to. I'm gonna install it. I'm not even gonna do the first run. I, I won't even do it until we it will, our first introduction to the title screen will be yes. streamed. We're just gonna do this together, 100. percent It's gonna be fantastic. <laughs> uh, anyway, so, uh, so that's <laughs> yeah, that's all I've been playing. I don't have anything else. I've got some old ass shit, and then overpaying for Nintendo Switch games. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I will say this, Adam, you have been playing yeah. something that has kind of piqued my curiosity. You've been playing oh, yeah. Hollow Knight. I have been. How about you tell us a little bit of this uh, gem of a game? Please Hollow do. Knight I got on the Steam sale for $11, $10, something like that. Um, I just saw a bunch of recommendations for it, you know, I on the, the subreddit games or whatever, and there's like, hey, this is a Steam sale going on. What are some games I should buy? And everybody's like, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, Hollow Knight, and whatever. So I saw a lot of mentions of that, and I checked it out. And I hadn't seen this game before this. So I don't really? know. Kind of, yeah. And I, oh, I mean, I'd, I'd kind of heard the name, but I never really looked into it until until the Steam sale. So um, from what I remember, so I into it, it looks beautiful. And the, the soundtrack is incredible, so I picked it up, played it like an hour and a little over an hour, hour 15 minutes, hour 20 minutes, something like that. Dang, nice. Uh, it's really good so far. It's a platformer. Um, it's got a really cool world. It's, it's, it's nice to explore. Like, all the people are bugs, and the art is cool, and it's got this, it's got its own kind of charm to it. Um, um, so it's platformy but is there is it just platformy like super meat boy kind of platformy it's, or it's very much uh it's a metroidvania mm, so okay it's it's a whole world to explore with all the um like uh the enemies respawn after you leave and come back stuff like that it's it's got this it's kind of a good mixture of like old school and modern platformy action Okay. Nice. But I'm looking forward to playing more of it for sure. Didn't uh, it get some awards or something? I know it it, it was it, it was a big deal at one point. It right? wouldn't surprise me. The soundtrack is incredible. It's very high quality. Um I'm not sure. I'm sure it got some awards. Yeah, anyway. I saw that there was like three different banners for like some indie game dev awards stuff that it got. Mm -hmm. So about how long do you think it is? A year, an hour and a half in, do you feel like, okay, I kind of see where it's going. I know how it's going to end or is it still a good ways I'm out? Just getting, I'm very much just getting started. It's, um, from what I understand, it's, it's kind of a longer, a longer game. Oh, really? I don't think it's one of those like five hour complete kind of games. It's probably got some time into it. Um, I can't remember the numbers. I, I I looked that up at some point. And I can't remember what it was. Okay. Well, how much did uh, did it end up running you? It was a, like eleven dollars. It's not bad. Not, not yeah, it's bad. like nine. It's like nine something. Nine something. Is it I nine just, something? Yeah, it's like nine something. I just I just looked I looked it up because. VW says main story twenty three and a half hours. Holy fuck! Oh wow! Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. It Dang. seems like it's going to be pretty in depth. Um, I noticed you've the what they do with the map is really cool. So, um, you've got a little mini map you can pull up, but it doesn't show the whole area, and it doesn't even show the areas you've been to until you get to a checkpoint sort of thing. That's weird. so. And you and like it doesn't show markers. It doesn't show markers for like the areas of interest unless you have those upgrades to show that specific thing. So you go to the shop, it's a map shop, and you have to buy pins that shows you where like the fast travel things are. And if you don't buy those pins from the shop, it won't show up on the map. Oh, oh what? It's kind of cool. And it's kind of this got like weird. this, you've got this central hub little city at the part I am so far. And that's where like your, it's, it's a bench. You sit on the bench and it updates your map and saves the game. So you go out exploring and you can't see where you're going. Um, it's, I won't want to say it's easy to get lost, but it's not, it's very much not linear. And you can explore all these caves and none of it shows up on your map until you go back to that main hub and you sit on that bench, it says map updated. And oh, then awesome. you can see it shows you like the, the structures of where you've been and everything. So a bench is your hub, pretty much. Uh, yeah, well, there's multiple benches throughout, but they're not okay. like... There's like not bug? a lot of them. I've only ran into two so far. But, okay. Um, 
uh, the combat's fun. From what I understand, it supposedly gets pretty difficult. Um, it hasn't been super difficult yet. I haven't. I think I died once. Oh, really? Yeah, that that's not bad. so bad. I know the the boss the bosses throughout the entire game were um, were very unique. From what I saw, that was one of the things that was uh, mm. mentioned to me when I was <clears throat> when I was talking to people about it, and when I was reviewing like just like random screenshots and stuff. Uh-huh. All of the all of the bosses were really unique, really really interesting, really well crafted. So hopefully, when you get deeper into it, we'll uh, we'll hear some about that. Yeah, I'd be interested yeah. to hear um, after a week or two you getting into that, or even once you beat it, to uh, hear what you say. You should probably stream some of that. I'm kind of curious to see it. Oh, yeah, yeah well, definitely. Could. That'd be I'll great. definitely be streaming some. That'd be a good game to stream. And um, if I remember right, you're actually also um, working on making a game, helping out with some audio stuff. Am I correct? Yes, actually, that's why I didn't hardly game this week is because I've been busy. Uh, kind of crunching that down because uh, we got another developer to agree to play test it for us. Oh, nice! So nice. we're putting we're putting the final touches on a beta build to send to them. Um, um, please shamelessly plug away. <laughs> <laughs> well, the game is called Cosmonaut. It's a uh, retro pixel survivor horror, survival horror, sci-fi story based thing that probably checks a lot of cliche roll your eyes boxes but um it's the first game i've worked on um it's the first game that you might even know maldini from the streams but uh, he's doing all the coding he did the uh, the initial story mock-ups this is his baby this is his first big mm-hmm. game he went to school for um game development so nice. during during that time it, in uh, when he went to school is where a lot of this got done and uh, he asked me to do all the sounds and music, so I've been busy putting all that stuff together. Because, easy. <laughs> because so, uh, so are we going to get? Uh, are we going to get <laughs> a sneak that. peek on seventy-two pin connector? Um, uh, maybe at some point I will uh, have to run that by everybody involved, of course. <laughs> but, so um, no, I would I, love to. Yeah, let's say fuck the sneak peek. What we need to do <laughs> is you you know the dev pretty well. I think most of us have talked to him a little bit. We need to get him to work in the seventy two PC logo on like a crate in the background or something <laughs> during one of the first <laughs> levels. Easter at seventy two PC Easter egg. That'd be cool. How about, how about like if there are dead characters in the background or something, have one be wearing a seventy-two PC shirt. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't be a dead NPC. <laughs> that but, would um, solve so many goals in my life. <laughs> Checkbox. But no, I've been having a, uh, I've been having fun, kind of building all the stuff for it. There's been a lot of challenges because I'm making all these sounds from scratch, and you think about it, and you don't realize how many sounds there are in a video game. Like, everything you hear, somebody has to put together for that game. It doesn't just happen, you know? Right. And um, so I'm recording these sounds, and first off, I live in a small house, and that is where all of my equipment is. So (laughs) everything I record for this game has to be, like, in my living room. Or, you know, I don't have a mobile recording rig. So um, that kind of limits things a little bit. And there's also the fact that it's a sci-fi game, so a lot of the sounds that need to happen are not just things I can find and record. You know, I can't just bring a spaceship in here and record <laughs> the sounds of it taking off or well, you why know, not? Why not? purchase Very a cool. laser purchase a laser rifle and fire it off in my house and record the sound of that. You know, you have to kind of like, get creative. So, it sounds to me like you're just slacking. And <laughs> yeah. Excuses. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I've had to get I've had to get a little creative. <laughs> yeah. um, actually, I remember uh, working with one you on I'll oh, go ahead. Uh, one of the sounds I had to do was um, like a creature alien type thing. Like the death animation, it, it like explodes a little bit. So <laughs> I'm like <laughs> trying to figure out how do I make this fleshy, bloody, gross sounding, squishy explosion thing. <laughs> so I took a Ziploc. Firecrackers and raw yeah, chicken. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, I, I took a, a Ziploc bag and I filled it with water. I held it in front of the mic. And I punched it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it sounded surprisingly visceral. And that's awesome. You know, when I mixed that with a couple of other sounds, kind of blended them together, and you know, you can manipulate audio a surprising amount after you record it. Even there's a lot you can do, and uh, yeah, it that actually worked. 
So That's I so had to cool. get a little creative. Awesome. That's a lot better. So than are I you going to be able to end. play this game? Are you going to be able to play this game without like? Like you open a door and you hear like slight pops on the on the creaking door sound that you made. And you're like, oh god damn it! God damn it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Pro- I have no doubt. There's going to be something stupid in there. Like you ah. fire up Reaper. You're like, Jesus fucking <sighs> Christ! I can hear my <laughs> oh, I, can, I can hear my air conditioner in the background of that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah, I, that's I when I record the sounds I have to turn off my air conditioner and my fan because Mike is very sensitive that kind of stuff pops in especially when you start Manipulating the audio it, you can bring that stuff in more So you got to make sure that the initial recording is very clean So my house is actually kind of hot right now because I've had the AC off most of the day um, Recording sucks. stuff Yeah, honestly, I was expecting the story of you punching the ziploc bag to end with and then there was a hole <laughs> yeah. and my computer yeah. was and ruined. then it exploded. <laughs> yeah, and then the water went all over my nice microphone and all over the computer and everything's ruined and yeah. But then I took the sounds careful. of me weeping and screaming yes. and turned those into yeah. alien death sounds. I sound, pitched so. that down and it made this very disgusting monster sound. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that is awesome. That is great. <laughs> and Josh, I heard you was yes. actually doing a little bit of um prepping for a new game that's i shouldn't say prepping but um life is strange has a sequel announced and i heard you're going through the original at this point yes yes i i really like like the story story driven games i've always been like a big fan of those especially something like uh j- just that like you kind of get swept up in and you go along with it and I, I didn't know anything about life is strange i've seen the cover art but that's about as far as it went um so when i dove into it i was actually kind of surprised about like how it was handled i didn't realize there was like kind of like a sci-fi element to it and uh it's really good i don't know if i want to talk too much about like the exact story and what you're doing but for the for the most part you're just kind of like it seems like you're like a teenage girl going through like kind of art school and kind of dealing with your own um anxieties and and with that, you get like you know a special ability to manipulate what you're doing in the story, and it and that kind of like builds what the story is. Um, I don't want to go too much into into that portion of it because it was a nice surprise for me, and I actually didn't think that that was going to happen. Mm-hmm. So uh, it was a it was a, it was really good. Um, so far, there's like a few cringy things that I don't really like. Um, like they have a lot of stereotypical teen angst built into it, and in some of it, it seems a little artificial in some ways. Um, mm. just cause you're like, maybe cause I'm like an adult now and I like, I'll just, just say something like, just, just go say something that, that would solve everything, mm. <laughs> but you don't get that option. So sometimes it gets a little like that. And then I also used to, uh, ride BMX a lot. And so there's one particular scene where he goes up to these like skater guys and starts like trying to talk and the skater guys talk back calling her like a poser and stuff mm-hmm. and i got and it, it was really 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 cringy for me because it's like <laughs> they don't talk like that at all like, like that's just not that's not how like exclusive they are and it was just really it was really strange uh, on that aspect of it. And well, then, because uh, life is strange. Life is right. very strange. <laughs> I guess, uh, uh, it, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that and then like, uh, I had a lot of friends that went through like art school. I actually went through art school and stuff and it's it's really cringy when you say you're an artist. I don't know why I like that hurts so much. Like it really, <laughs> it's it's really really cringy when someone says like, "Oh, I'm an artist." I just can't deal with it, and they <laughs> well, constantly say it in this like, "Oh, I'm an I'm an artist." And see, like, I can't oh, even you're hear a photographer. It. An like, artist. Yeah, exactly. An I artist. can't hear that phrase without thinking I'm an artist. That yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> artist. It's just so oh, oh, oh. it's like instantly pompous and I like kind of yes. devalue the person every single time I hear it. Like it's like oh, oh I guess that's just what an artist's life is like. And I'm like oh, oh. like <laughs> oh, God. It's just like, oh, like what, what oh, to the would solve that. <laughs> yeah. Like I actually turned it off um because like like it was great. The story's good and like how the player the people and the characters interact with each other is really great and it feels mm-hmm. really genuine and the story is actually it feels good, like going through it for the most part. Uh mm-hmm. but like I had to turn it off when she said artist again. I'll I'll, I'll still continue through it, but I was just like, mm, just stop for now. I'll come back to you. But right now I, I can only handle so much cringe. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Now, I really want there to be, like, an Overwatch character who's a pompous artist, but he keeps saying, like, an artist of death. 
Like oh. he kills people in miraculous, amazing <laughs> nice. ways. Kind of like that creepy guy from the original Bioshock. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> that's great. Oh, I, I like the idea of him just being a painter. <laughs> I, <you> know, <laughs> he just like paints things. There's a character in an anime that I watch, um, and he uh, and he paints. He has this power that anything he paints turns to turns to life. But he can only he, that, he they stole that from Kirby. Right, but he's really shitty at painting. Like everything he paints is like really, really awful. And it's just like, and so like they keep, he keeps trying to like help them, and it keeps coming out really shitty. And so it's like barely, like just barely helping them. It's really good. So is that a comedy? Because awesome. that sounds pretty funny. It is. It well, I mean, it, it has bits of comedy. It's it's One Piece. It's very popular, uh, but it's it's really if if you actually we're interested in getting on in a lifelong commitment. Um, <laughs> yeah, One Piece has 800, uh, what, 800 episodes, something like that. Oh, fuck. Oh, I God. thought they were over a thousand. Okay. They're no, still no, no, under. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's been going on for years and years and years. Most of the people uh, are about my age that was, were, were there from the beginning. Cause it's just, it's been going that long. There's some like really intense stuff there too. Really dramatic stuff too, as well as like the comedy comedy is pretty spot on. But anyway, uh, that's all I've been playing. Um, Eric, what have, you been, what have you been up to, man? I haven't actually got a chance to talk to you about that. I, I am going to request that Eric start to the game that I was actually watching his stream of today. Oh. Um, um, so, so I, okay, I turned, on, I will turned start... on the 72 PC stream. Hmm? I say, okay, in that case, I will start with the one everyone's been talking about, Mario Kart. Yes. I've been playing. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> No, no. Yeah, we've um, never talked about that, Mario that Kart goes off your Let's list. do that. So, uh, it's, it's marked off. This morning, um, I went ahead and bought a game. <laughs> I was waiting for the sale because I knew I was going to get this game. It was going to go one of two ways. I was going to get this or Adam was going to get this. Either way, one of us was going to have this game. Yeah, I almost did. And I was like, no. So when Adam backed I'll buy off, the cheaper one. I decided that I would jump in and buy it. And I picked up Near Autonoma. Um. Ugh. Sorry for those of you on stream. I realize that there's definitely some network issues going on right now. My apology. But anyway, uh, Nier Autonoma is fucking awesome so far. Um, I streamed it for about two hours, and I probably went another hour afterwards just sticking around. So nice. um, this game's weird. Um, I don't 100% know what the story is going to be like all the way through. It has like four different storylines. You beat it once, then you play it again as someone else, you play it again as someone else, you play it again as someone else. So to get the full story, it takes, I think it, uh, Matt told me, it was something like 40, 45 hours in total. But that's wow. four Whoa. playthroughs. And um, the game switches perspectives. So this is the first time I've been in a game outside of like maybe Evo Land, where it says, fuck genres, fuck perspective, I do what I want. The game starts, and you're doing a top-down shooter like 1942. And then all of a sudden, it does a little cut sequence, and you transition into a dual-stick shooter bullet hell. And then it does another transition. It turns into a side-scrolling shooter. And then you're doing a flying sequence in 3D space, dodging things like Star Fox style. And then all of a sudden, it goes a transition. and goes into an action hack-and-slash game. And then does another transition. You go into a 2D platformer. It is all <laughs> over the fucking place. Perspective is nothing. It constantly oh. changes. Well, perspective is everything, I guess I should say. It constantly changes. But it's all seamless. It's, it's yes, very it is, natural and fluid. It is very beautifully done. It is not like, well, I'm going to hit this area and I load into this. No, it's like, okay, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm in this area. And then all of a sudden I walk in here and it turns into a top-down 2D thing yeah, until you get this like, chest. Hmm. You walk back out of the area. And I don't mean like it loads. I mean... You get underneath this thing, and then the camera pivots. It's just a rotating yeah. down camera like you get in every other game. But as the camera rotates, it will switch your perspective and how you can play the area. That's really cool. I like it's that a lot. It's kind of real cinematic in that aspect, too, not just gameplay-wise. It, it, it kind of works from a cinematic standpoint, too. Yes. Um, this game also, as far as cinematics, I'm going to tie in the story, is going to get really... Um, super theoretical i believe mm. i think this is mm. going to turn into a what is life kind of thing mm. oh, like right, what yes. con what constitutes as life i really see that as being the direction this is going to go in a very very cool way you are well, playing you, your main characters you play are androids right yes androids and 
um, I okay, this happens in the first hour. I don't think I'm spoiling shit by saying that. When you mm-hmm. die, they, they say this, like right after the very first area, you die, it's part of your design, your memories get saved and they implant it into your next Android and you continue oh. on. Okay. So you are you in I another body. Those. Yes, I know. Everyone oh, wants okay. one of those, man. Fuck it, man. Or I'm 80 years old. You? Let's restart. Yeah, you can be <laughs> I don't know. See, that, that. Go, that goes into a real philosophical thing of if you replace your memories into another body, is that you? Like the whole yeah. argument with teleportation, like, oh, if yeah. you're disassembled and reassembled, are right. you dead? Well, at one point, on, um, yeah. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't remember the ship name, but there was, yes. there was an old yes. um, uh, philosophy question of essentially... If the a ship sh- of Theseus. Huh? Theseus. Yes. If, if a boat takes sail and you replace every piece of the boat before it lands, it did the same boat land that sailed. Right. Yes, exactly. So yeah. I mean, it's the same argument with a Star Trek teleporter, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anytime anyone beams up, they're actually like killing themselves. Yeah. And that's a brand new person. Yes. So, every, so you're watching this like <laughs> mass suicide. I wish I knew what, what graphic novel did this, but there was a graphic novel that basically went into, you know, Android. Everyone's got um, like an Android body and their consciousness is uploaded. So mm-hmm. uh, there is no murder anymore. There's only property damage. And oh, sort of the nice. societal breakdown that happens because of that. Because you can just, you can kill everyone. Because you're not killing anyone. You're just wrecking their shit. Well, and <laughs> to go really simple with that, there's also a movie um, with uh, Bruce Willis. Where they're all oh, surrogates, yeah, surrogates. surrogates. Where there's no murder. Yeah, that was, oh, that yeah, was I interesting. That mm-hmm. I remember that movie. And he refused to um, actually participate. Also, uh, the game Soma from the Frictional Games. The mm-hmm. people who made Amnesia. There's some uh, some of that sort of thing in that too. I can't not recommend that game. I, I know I've brought this up before, but that's one of my favorite <laughs> games of all time. <laughs> it's really uh, really good. But um, I will say this: near it has some really cool RPG elements. Um, it has twin stick shooter elements almost the entire time while doing hack and mm-hmm. slash. So nice. it's it's cool. it's really interesting. It's a little confusing because I mean you're using four to five buttons at a time. And we're not talking nice. press one, press the other. We're talking simultaneous pressing. It's really wow. interesting how this game plays. It takes a little bit to get used to. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, as long as you're okay with a... Sl- it's not even complex, but being able to use multiple fingers at the same time, this seems like it's going to be a very, very good game. It is one of the first times I've seen a AAA... This is Square Enix. A AAA company going at a story like an indie dev. I mean, this is an indie dev story. This is mm-hmm. stuff you don't see AAA titles really getting at. And to come yeah. from Square Enix, I mean, Final Fantasy, Kingdom Hearts, I mean, you got big, it's a big fucking developer. Just dropped IO. Mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't realize that this was Square, um, which leads me to throw the biggest question on my mind, which is, how is it on PC? Because everything I've played from Squaresoft on PC is absolute dog shit. Um, I would be lying if I said it's seamless. Um, okay. Um, I had issues uh, with streaming. It was something happened to the window when I adjusted settings in the stream. I didn't notice it got locked on my settings page while I was playing. And uh, Vospec jumped in and was like, hey, this is fucked up. And I took me rebooting the game and just doing a fucking display or a display capture. Um, okay. There are some spots where the frames drop a little bit, but other than that, though, it runs fairly well. I mean, we're not talking like perfectly optimized, but I mean, yeah, okay, I hit maybe like 30 frames for a 10 second clip, but that was about it. Cinematics run well, and I'm running on fairly high settings. So it's all in all, it's not bad for PC. Well, it's not really, I'll call it a port. It all came out at the same time, but yeah, it's not bad. Um, I wouldn't let it scare you off. If that's what you're worried about, it's not a reason to okay. be scared. I'll say, I'll say it yeah, like that. I, I bought Final Fantasy 13 for the PC because I had it for the 360, but I wanted it on a you know, system I actually use and was hooked up. But it was extremely rough. It was a really rushed port. Um, so much so that you can't use Steam's in-home streaming on it and expect it to work right. <laughs> like it's, it's really, really bad. I have hesitations with that anyway, a little bit, and that's on solid games, so I wouldn't really want to fuck with a game that's iffy with it. 
Oh no, it's it's not like it's not like frame drops or or control lag or anything else. It literally no, I when a cuts. text box would when, when a text box would pop up, it would disconnect your your USB controller. Oh, so you would have to yeah you you could you could use a keyboard and the escape button. I think it instantly exited the game, which is which is just just great to have you know escape the thing that usually brings up a menu. Uh, be bound to instantly terminate your, your application. <laughs> Great fucking job, Square. Um, I mean, that's not yeah. even... What I'd be more concerned about with Square Enix is just not being able to understand the story. Most of the time, like, <laughs> so, so, like Square Enix games have like such convoluted, stupid stories that like... I, I heard Nier Automata was pretty easy to follow as far as you go mm-hmm. through it. Uh, mm-hmm. But like Square Enix games, for the most part, God, like I, I, I can go through the whole Final game. Final Fantasy Thirteen, you couldn't decipher anything in a Final Fantasy Thirteen without reading the fucking glossary before you started the game. Well, I mean, try like try something like Kingdom Hearts. Like, I don't know what the hell is. Go- I played almost all yeah. of them, and I have no idea what the plot is. I have no concept <laughs> of it. I went through all of Final Fantasy Seven, right? Played through the whole thing, no idea what it was. Then I rewatched it recently. There's like a, a whole like uh, gameplay with all the cu- with just the cutscenes all the way through. Mm-hmm. Watched yeah. all of it. It's like an hour or something like that. No idea what the story was about. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. Perfect. I mean, this I, is maybe an overgeneralization. Never get third. Isn't it pretty much Sephiroth is a test tube baby that's fucking evil? Yeah, but like, I mean, sort that's of, not a but story. Then there's an alien, <laughs> and then other... there's a meteor, and then there's the life force, and then there's all the secret projects, and then they're saving the planet, and then there's Avalanche. Well, the secret right. project you know, I mean, re- led to Sephiroth's mom that made him fucking Well, evil. his mom was like a crashed meteor alien thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, okay, they also of... did one. They did, This guy, uh, this YouTuber, went through, I, I'll find it, and I'll, I'll link it, but... Uh, this guy did a whole breakdown about what the story was about in Kingdom Hearts, like up to the latest one mm-hmm. at the time. And I watched that entire thing all the way through with all of the, how everyone intertwines. I still don't understand it. <laughs> and, and I even want, there, there's a breakdown of a, uh, like, there's a really great picture of how everyone's related. Uh-huh. And I still don't know how everyone's related because <laughs> they, they, like they, the reason That's is, is because nice. they have people that were old, but are young but are themselves, oh. but are also the son of themselves. Oh, God. So you have, like, this thing, and you're just uh, like, what? Like, how? Like, oh, just these Square Enix soap opera? Yeah. Have yes. you guys ever seen... Uh, Amnesia! <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ever seen the movie Primer? Uh, I have I not heard about it. Sounds familiar. It's very much uh, insanely confusing in that in that way, too. It's uh, <laughs> It involves time travel, and... Uh, it was... Act- the, the movie was actually... Uh, written and directed by an actual physicist. Oh, what? So he's like... That's rad. <laughs> and, and a lot of it is based on like theories that could be somewhat, you know, realistic-ish, as far as time travel goes anyway. <laughs> but um, if you want to be confused, it's one of those you have to watch it like a million times and you still might not understand it. And there's a big graph oh. of the all the plot lines and timelines and stuff. But uh, it's... Uh, yeah, if you ever want to work your brain out a little bit, give that one a watch. <laughs> but yeah, I'm so add that to my list. So yeah, we just flamed on Square Enix uh, storylines a little bit, so I expect to hear some pissed off people because those tend to be pretty love franchises. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but other than that, anyway. I've been dabbling. Uh, play, started up XCOM again. Um, I'm getting ah. ready for uh, Mario Rabbids, baby. Got to get ready for that shit. <laughs> so um, that was so. So you played the ninety nine percent chance to hit, and he still missed game. <laughs> yeah. So I had a I had a spot where I had three different people shooting with over sixty percent chance, and all of them missed. And I oh was so God. pissed. And I mean, it's the game doesn't the X-Con. game doesn't cheap. It's just literally legitimate rolls every <laughs> fucking time. So, RN I mean, Jesus was not with thee. Did you yeah. pray? Did you pray to RN Jesus before you pray said, harder? <laughs> I need to pray for the RN Jesus next time. But um You need to sacrifice dice next time. Yeah. I did not play. There's a mode where you can never reload. You have to play through the consequences of your actions. Oh so oh, whoa. I, I think I've talked about this on this cast where this kind of game typically has issues with me because I have issues and get attached to players that I build up. And this game's yeah. designed in a way where everyone's expendable. 
Like I had a mission where I had to send someone up to hit a button and I knew when I did it, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to get him back. I hit this button and then I have to run and this fucker just died. And he was my second highest ranking person. He was stacked. I'm just like, oh my God, why don't I just reload? Just reload. So I mean, I that's that's real emotional. (laughs) So I'm just, I'm working on this now because I I don't know. I've I've talked about this, but with the Mario Rabbids, um, it's going to be XCOM like. It's probably going to be an XCOM light because I don't see it being as technically deep. But mm-hmm. the big yes, question you, Mario has to go to that hill. You're never getting him back. The big oh question is <laughs> um, It's like super emotional. <laughs> yeah. Um, if it's going to be permadeath or not is the big mm. question. I mean, granted, they're not going to have it as death. Regardless of what happens, it won't be actual death. But is someone going to mm-hmm. disappear and have to go to the rabbit's land because they died? Right. Maybe captured. And that's why their rabbits mm. take over their bodies or some crap like that. That sounds kind of dark. Yeah. I right? mean, I, I'm just curious to see how they do it because Nintendo <laughs> doesn't do dark like that. They don't. I mean, the darkest it does what right. like fucking Luigi's Mansion. But I mean, hey, that's that pretty dark. <laughs> they, they don't do dark. Granted, this he is an Ubisoft a game. It was pretty dark. It was very dark. <laughs> it was very dark. But um, <laughs> God damn it. So I'm just curious. I'm, I love this style of gameplay, though. So... I wanted to play this to cure that itch because I am um, irrationally excited for Mario <laughs> Rabbids. I might be more excited That's for insane. Mario Rabbids than Mario Odyssey. <laughs> I don't know how I could. I can't even frame the well, words. Mario Odyssey is a T-Rex. I, right I, I like strategy games. And this is the first time Mario's ever had a fucking gun. The fucking picture had him with the Mega Man blaster that was decorated <laughs> as a bullet bill. I mean, come He's on. Probably, <laughs> it's probably just gooing people. Yeah. It's just like, oh, I'm so messy. I gotta go take a shower now. And then they leave. And Luigi looked like he was holding a fucking cement mixer when he was jumping over some pipe. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. The weapons are gonna be <laughs> fucking weird. It's Mario. They can't <laughs> yeah, just give him all really fire fun. flowers. That'd be boring as shit. Fire yeah. flowers and Although, throwing toads as nades. <laughs> Still would be cool. I, I want to see Flood make an appearance. I want to see Mario's water cannon come back. Oh, that'd be oh, sick. That, that's different than that'd what, be pretty rad. That's different than I was thinking. I when you said Flood, I'm thinking, oh God, they're gonna like jump on and like infest like Halo Flood in Mario <laughs> is what I'm thinking. <laughs> I would totally pay for that game though. <laughs> Just get Zerg. And yes, D has pointed out in chat, Mario could use a gun in Super Smash Brothers. That is true. But it wasn't a mainline Mario. Oh, that's, this isn't mainline either. I hold back. You're right, Delaz. Fuck off. Anyway. So, um, <laughs> only other thing Shit's I've been doing stream. is a little bit of Rocket League, which had some pretty sweet fucking news come out. Um, did you guys hear about all this? Did. Yeah, the yeah. NBC thing. Yes. Yes. So, um, Rocket League has been picked up by NBC and they're going to be airing a two-on-two tournament with a $100,000 prize pool, airing it on NBC Sports. So as I've been championing with all these Dota haters out there that this is going to end up making it, this is what's going to mainstream it. It's going to be shown on sports channels. This is its first foray into it, and I think it's only going to grow from this. Right. I mean, it's a big, it's definitely a big deal, but it, it's more of a big deal for esports than it is necessarily the biggest news for Rocket League. Because you have two, you have two sides of the coin there. You have like the mainstream potential of, it, of esports in general, mm-hmm. which is the NBC transition because it's so easy to pick up and put on the TV. It doesn't have people dying. It doesn't have people, you know, it's not really overly complicated. You don't have to like know how to play the game to understand the game. So it's mm-hmm. really easy for someone like NBC, for something like NBC to pick it up and put it on their, uh, on their thing. Uh, the biggest news that I saw that came out recently is the world champions got picked up uh, by Envious. And that's a big deal for Rocket League as an esport. To get the reason that kind that, of sponsor in there. Right. Because if any of you are not following uh, esports very closely, there's, you know, there's small organizations that, that uh, have teams and they have little teams. But then there's also massive organizations that have multiple teams for different games and they make, you know, these people make money, like re- like actual money. It's their job, right? 
Envious is one of those big, you know, those really massive organizations. So to have these two things happen simultaneously is insane for Rocket League because you have them transitioning into the, I guess, public market. I guess, is that, would that be something that you, so yes. it's them transitioning into the public market. And then at the same time, it instantly got uh, validation as an esport. You already had flip side tactics, which is very validated and a few other ones, but mm-hmm. Envious is huge. So like, what are your guys' thoughts on that? I think the more big names that get in, the better. But I hate to say it like this. I want to see non esports sponsors start sponsoring. I don't Agreed. want these guys who are used to churning over contracts left and right and poaching people. I want to see fucking, um, oh my God, I blanked. Dallas Mavericks head coach or owner, uh, Mark Cuban. I want to see him get in on it. I want to see him buy a team, sponsor a team. Mm-hmm. I want to see some of these big, really big sports guys who run it like an actual athletic organization get into the mix. I think we'll know that Rocket League has made it as a, uh, as a legitimized, understood, like real life sport. Um, when during the Rocket League tournament, we have, you know, erection pills commercials during the, <laughs> during the tournament. I don't know if you saw, right. Tom, there was brisk commercials. I mean, they're starting to get legit. Everyone yeah, knows. They're getting everyone yeah, but, knows I mean, commercials now, though. They, they really need right. to target the, the sports demographic, which is just, you know, full of Viagra and mutual fund <laughs> commercials. You know, buy this car, get this mutual fund, make your dick hard. <laughs> no, you forgot one. There's only really two big demographics you have to hit. Drink beer and get this pill to make your dick hard. That's all you need. <laughs> That's your sports demographic right there. Maybe steaks. <laughs> steaks. <laughs> steaks. Steaks, beer, and sex. And you got your sports hey, demographic. Hey, I mean, at one point, me, me, Adam, and RS were sponsored by an organization, and we did get a pretty serious discount on some beef jerky. So yeah. <laughs> I think like it was five percent off. Oh yeah, oh, oh, Jesus. You know yeah, yeah. That the much? best. The best thing about that is that you could actually go on their site and pick up a free code for twenty percent off. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! They were giving randos more of a discount than their sponsored team. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so you guys made bank playing oh, for that yeah. team. That's okay. literally all we got, and I don't think I don't think any of us bought any of this shitty jer- jerky that we were no. selling. But, but you got it t-shirts like, though, right? It was like uh, yeah, that uh, I paid for. It was like a sm- <laughs> it's like small company craft beef jerky. It was like outrageously expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Like, yeah. right. Did you have to eat it on stream while playing tournaments? Just mm. this you had to hold it right beside out. You had to show it logo <laughs> out while you're eating it. Oh, look at this! <laughs> These quality chicken McNuggets. These are so good. Oh, <laughs> you see, Tom acts yeah, like he's doing yeah. product placement, but he really wanted to take a bite without being unprofessional. There. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Did you see? Did you see that guy though? That guy that was like, trying to do the Twitter announcement for. Uh, for Wendy's, uh, for chicken nuggets, uh, like how much, yes. how many Twitter, uh, what is it, follows or retweet? How many ret- retweets until uh, I get free chicken nuggets for life? And they said like, what, oh, what was yeah. it like, a, like was it eighty million or something like like it was eighteen million, eighteen million, and yeah. he got he got really close. I think it's still going. People should retweet no, he, that shit. He got oh it. he got it. Oh, he got it. Did he? <laughs> Basically, he didn't get eighteen million, but um, what what was it? Like Ellen had like the most retweeted thing of all time, and it surpassed that. Oh and no! He, nice. And he like went on her show and all that kind of stuff. And then Wendy's was like, "All right, here's your nuggets. <laughs> all right, you win." <laughs> Wendy's tends to be a company that um has good fun when it comes yeah, to social yeah. media. I will give them yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. Have you seen some of the stuff their Twitter account posts? It's just absurd. Just like bashing to people and the stuff. others. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. It's like fuck playing nice. <laughs> and That's speaking great. of playing nice, uh, do you guys see uh, Take Two is backing off of the um, banning of the mod for GTA Five? Praise be to Rockstar. Oh, they're backing uh, up. Yeah. Well, yeah. and let's oh. not make it sound altruistic. Did you guys see what happened to their Steam reviews? Yes, dude. Mm. Their oh, community yeah. oh, revolted. Right. <laughs> I mean, they were honestly. I think what was it mostly negative? Is what it got down to? Right, it did. Yep. Yeah, 
I mean, that community is like, fuck you, we want our mods. So they're like, okay, we'll let you have your mods. <laughs> so, so luckily, Rockstar is cool, uh, and mm-hmm. Take-Two sucks. So what happened was Take-Two said, holy shit, there's a lot of people using mods to cheat in Grand Theft Auto Online. Right. We should put a stop to this. So they basically just shotgunned everyone, and they said, if you have mods for Grand Theft Auto, go fuck yourselves, you know, cease and desist, or we'll sue you. Um, which in Rockstar was like, holy shit, guys, what have you done? <laughs> what did you just do? Um, and, you know, the community revolted. Rockstar's like, please, look, we're trying to work this out. We're trying to make Take-Two back off. Give us give us time. Steam reviews plummeted. Um, and uh, now Take-Two said, okay, look, we're only going to cease and desist multiplayer mods because they fuck with the game. And, yeah, okay, I get that. I get that. Um, you know, if, if Grand Theft Auto V had a legit modding framework that, you know, it was, it was easy to work with, it didn't involve patching DLLs, um, then, then they wouldn't have this problem, right? There are plenty of single-player games with multiplayer components um, that have perfectly healthy modding communities because it's built into the game, right? With with GTA V, at least the last time I modded it, involved throwing a whole bunch of nasty shit into a folder and overriding files, and that's that's not the way you do it. Yes, um, I understand that it, that's an issue, and by and large, I think mods are okay. They just need to... I One time I see issues with mods, or two, I should say, is A, the cheaters. Yes, get that shit out. Yeah. But B... Yep. As much as I like mods, if they're selling something and you're modding a free version of it that you made yourself, they have the right to come in and say, yeah, that mod can't exist. Yeah, I, I totally get it. But, like, you, like you, shouldn't, you shouldn't take somebody's DLC that the publisher is selling, make a free mod that does the DLC and say, hey, guys, you can get it for free now. That's shitty. Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> so, I mean, I understand them wanting to control it, but yeah, they, they did this fucking wrong and the community made them backtrack. Yeah. Like, in in Skyrim, on the Genesis, my favorite part uh, is when you have Thomas the tank engine instead of all the dragons, and it does the <laughs> choo-choo as it sweeps down. It's, it's so great. Or, uh, what's, what's his, uh, Randy, Randy Savage, or... Ooh, Macho yes, Man. Macho Savage, Man. Yeah. <laughs> and those dragons looked insane. That was, that yes. was a blast. Oh my god, it was great. <laughs> and also a weird one this week, Netflix is making some gaming news. They're getting into the game dev world, Tom? Kinda, sorta. Weird. I mean <laughs> It's weird. So um it yeah, it is weird, but it kinda it kinda fits their MO. Um so they want to get into choose your own adventure stories, um, mostly targeted at kids. Uh, you're not going to see like you know Marvel's Daredevil being a choose your own adventure thing, although that would be rad as shit. Um, <laughs> in- instead, you're going to see like uh, original characters or licensed characters in sort of these funny, wacky stories for kids to play with um, on you know Netflix, uh, their their video streaming platform. Um, it's interesting. Not a whole lot of details have come out about it yet, uh, other than the announcement and some some cursory stuff. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'll we'll cover this when uh, when it comes out. We I imagine we've all got Netflix subscriptions, so we can go I play mean, a a kid's game. Yeah, so, I mean, I mean, this has been this is kind of thing is I mean, it's in gaming the choose your own adventure thing. People they do more of these for adults like un- like until dawn for instance it, it, this sort of thing would be great for like a horror movie like if you're going through like a horror movie you have to choose everything well uh, the horror movies wouldn't be hard don't run in the house jump in the car you win well you <laughs> yeah i mean it's not that yeah, crazy because you're not the, you're not the dungeon master he's the person that's that's scripting this is the dungeon master they're gonna know they like call oh i heard a noise like don't answer the door oh great okay so someone from the floorboard came and pulled you under now you're dead you know like, <laughs> you know it, he that he or she or them or they can actually script all that so i mean having a horror uh a horror style of this would be amazing that would be so fun like i couldn't 
I think I would enjoy that more than I would just watching a horror movie because then you're like yelling at the screen. My favorite, <laughs> my hands down favorite horror movie situation was in The Descent. I don't know if you guys have watched The Descent. Um, no. no. Watch it. It's great. It's fantastic. But there's there's a scene when <laughs> when the girls are hiding, right? They, they run. They're running, running from these like things underground. And you'll see what they are if you, when you watch it. And then th- they have to hide. So like they're hiding. And one girl's like, like one of them just like ran off and she's gone. And then they're trying to find her. And they're like hiding. And then they're trying to be as quiet as possible. And then this girl just yells, Becca! Like as loud as she possibly <laughs> can. And you're like, shut up. Like, what are you doing? They're right there. And she goes, Becca! Like, yeah, like as loud as you can. <laughs> like, like, are you shitting me? And you know hilarity ensues but you get the idea it's i would love to have those sort of options and like a horror ge- a horror movie because then you can go through it and like i don't know fail imagine how hilarious that would be you just like fail through a horror movie get everyone killed and it's over in like 10 minutes or see they need to also <laughs> so like what it is with goosebumps you choose it and all of a sudden you read like the first three lines of the page like oh fuck oh fuck oh fuck i didn't choose it didn't choose it go back go back go back <laughs> <laughs> I, I would love so so initially they're going to do this for um, you know targeted towards young kids, mm-hmm. um, but I I would love to see something like horror movie or action movie, um, not not really because I, I think I would get bored if I was playing it on my own if I just like sitting there oh, in the yeah, hotel room, but like. Mm-hmm. If we all four got on a couch and we were running through like some shitty B horror movie together in a choose your own adventure style, that'd be fucking great. Right. That's Cabin what that's Woods. what they did. I mean, that's <laughs> what they did in Until Dawn uh, when the people that made Until Dawn uh, realized that it was a single player playthrough and you'd make your choices as you go through it. Right. Um, but what they realized is that people didn't really play it like that. It wasn't fun for people. What they enjoyed doing was sitting on a couch with a bunch of friends or streaming it with a bunch of people watching and people shouting out what they should do. And that mm-hmm. was the fun aspect of it. That's why, that's why they, they, they built their next game like that. That's why it's built around that world. So it's actually quite good. But anyway. All right. <laughs> Well, so yeah, that's the thing. Netflix will have that out when they actually get some hard information. We will revisit that because we're sure that'll actually be really interesting. Um, Switch OS had an update uh, to me. There was one cool feature they sounded like, and then I got on to check it out, and it kind of sucked. Uh, they were going no. to make uh, customizable news feeds. It sounded like where you can follow the games you want, but in actuality, you got to do it. There's five games you can choose from, and it gives you information on them. So, oh, you're. I think I think you've buried the lead on this story. No, that was the lead. No, no nothing but, else. About the this, lead? Nothing about this mattered. Okay, I'm I'm going to read this. Um, the maximum volume when using headphones or speakers connected to the audio jack has been raised and can be lowered if desired. This is a game changer for my bus switch playing. Oh my god, guys, you have no idea. The switch volume, and it's it's one of those things where I thought, ah, because it's a kid's system. Like I didn't I didn't feel like I could complain about it, but mm-hmm. it was criminally low. When I was wearing these headphones, like I would crank them, and I, I actually took off my headphones because the switch speakers were louder than my headphones. That's a problem. <laughs> That's really fucking annoying. And this update has fixed that. Oh my god, it's so much better. See, I never had that much of an issue when I was on the airplane. I put my headphones in and I went with it. No issue. Like like for earbuds, the earbuds aren't an issue because they're inside, they're sort of noise canceling ish, you know, drown out the world. But like these headphones, which are, you know, sort of open ear, mm-hmm. I I could never get loud enough sound. Oh. Yeah, but but this update this update fixes that. So uh, along with you know some some bug fixes, which is cool because I actually ran into some nasty bugs with the switch when uh, you put it to sleep and turn it on and put it to sleep really quickly. Um, it can sometimes crash the system, which is great when you know like you you turn it on you're like shit I didn't mean to do that. You turn it off. Oh wait, what's my battery at? Do I need to plug it in? Turn it on. Check it. Turn it off again. Mm-hmm. And now you've lost progress in Zelda because your game crashed. Like that's that's shitty. So that problem should be fixed, which would be nice. Nice. Yeah, it was interesting, but uh, to me, it was a small update. Didn't do much for me, but it did fix that crash, which I guess is useful. 
Um, there was one really, really fun piece of news. Um, let me get this game right because I can never remember the name of this game. But <laughs> so this is a great example of when devs are awesome. So yes, there's a game this. called Rising Storm 2 Vietnam. And um, you have vehicles in this game. And I guess this one kid always played support. And he would drive his helicopter into a hot spot where he had a gunner. So he'd have to get down, get people and get out really quick. And a lot of times whenever there was a fire, he would go to take off out of this one clearing close enough to the evac point, And he would hit this fucking tree that's out in the middle of this wide open field. Not doesn't have to be there at all. So he got on Reddit and he shouted out to the developers, took a screenshot of this tree and says, why does this need to exist? And <laughs> the very next update in the patch notes, they call out that there was a map update to remove a lone tree per request and gave the username from Reddit and said, we agree with you. They removed the fucking tree from the game because this kid complained about That's it. That's so cool. That's so That's perfect. This is fucking rad. This is when game devs understand it. They got it. It's not mm -hmm. game changing yeah. and it, it's a great fucking story. <laughs> well, it's, it's game changing for that one guy, yeah, right? That yeah, that makes yeah. all the difference for that one guy. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, he can he can now play his class the way he wants to. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was quite awesome. Um, and then really, that's about all we got for news. Uh, we have one big announcement that I'm sure all of you guys listening right now probably know: Steam is stealing your money, and it's currently <laughs> being stolen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> It's the annual summer sale, and oh my god, once again, fucking things are on sale. <laughs> Always. Oh my god. Um, I think Doom, sale. Doom's down to like 15 bucks. Um, oh Jesus, fucking buy that. I picked up Nier for 40. Yeah. Uh, Transistor's down to like three or four. You guys have any yeah. big titles you want to call out? Uh, uh, I need to see I what I just handful. bought. Resident, they... Resident Evil 7's 40% off at $36. That was a really good game, Ooh. and it's uh, still a new one. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. Soma probably one of might be my favorite horror game of all time, just because of the, how good the story was. Seventy percent off. It's nine bucks. Uh, Hollow Knight. It's got a lot of good recommendations. I've had a really good first impression with it so far. Uh, it's ten bucks, nine something. Um, uh, looks like Firewatch is eight ninety nine. Yeah, uh, oh, right now, good. and uh, that's definitely one to pick up. Um, jazz punk is, is uh, uh, it, jazz punk uh, is also five ninety nine, which is punk. a good. It, it's a good one. I, uh, apparently, uh, I've been I've been watching my wife play through it. She's shredding through that one. I've been listening right to your now. wife nice. play that one and cutting people's fingernails and yeah. what? <laughs> I might have to play. I'm gonna have to play through that and then I'll I'll report. But yeah. uh, and then of course of course uh, you can drink in advance if you want. Uh, Dark mm. Souls three is yeah. forty two forty nine for the whole oh the season pass with everything. Nice. I'll t uh, take another drink. The Witness is fifty percent off at twenty bucks. If you, <laughs> yes. if you like art, if you like uh, artsy, pretentious puzzle games, <laughs> I'm not going to oh, yeah, call this know. one pretentious. <laughs> it is. It's, it's very just very pretentious. It's just a puzzle game that looks beautiful. It's, Here, it's, it's pretentious. It's really pretentious in a good it's way. Made no, by I Jonathan loved it. Blow. Don't get me. Don't get me wrong. I loved it. I, that's right up my alley. And if we're um, forcing people to pass out from drinking, Rocket League is yeah. also eleven ninety nine. If you don't uh, own it, there is like yeah. two. There's three games on my list. I think everyone I know owns. Yeah, pretty much. You have CS:GO, Let's go where most people don't even know where they got the fucking game. They just have it. Right. <laughs> yeah. I think I sent six copies to people when it came out. You have Battlegrounds yeah. that everyone's bought in yeah. on. It's sold like 4 million copies worldwide, Which I think, today. isn't on sale right now because it doesn't well, need to be because everybody's buying it anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then I think now it's, you, it's 30 bucks. And then you have Rocket League. It's, yeah. Also, um, the Talos Principle is 75% off. It's 10 bucks. Um, it's another really good puzzle game. And if you like uh, solving puzzles and arguing with a... MS DOS program about what it means to be alive and the philosophy behind that. Um, I go to work though. That's what <laughs> that's, I do at work. Uh, no, that's it's one of the more fun aspects of that game too, not just the puzzling, but there's uh there's some interesting uh conversational back and forths that get pretty philosophical with the computer terminal. Kind of weird to say, hmm. but 
it's it's Not really if you neat. Use Linux. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the another good puzzle game is the Swapper. It's like three bucks now. Oh really? Oh, wow. that's totally worth that. And it's got a cool story too. Well, you can get. I bought uh, oh, go ahead. Ori in the Blind Forest for ten bucks. Nice. I've um, heard excellent things about that. Yeah, I I've had it on my list for a year or so, mm-hmm. um, and I just got like they've got the definitive edition for ten bucks. Oh, so cool! I'll be reporting back on that hopefully <laughs> in two weeks. Um, and then I bought uh, Dark Souls, but in two D, Salt and Sanctuary, which I've heard good things about. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Oh, um. As far as RPGs are concerned, uh, the Infinity, Infinity Collection for Boulder's Gate and Icewind Dale is $21 oh. for Boulder's Gate oh. uh, Enhanced Edition, Boulder's Gate 2 Enhanced Edition, uh, all the DLC for it, include, and then Icewind Dale as well. So I mean, f- huh. for those of you who um, liked turn-based, this is cl- as close to turn-based D&D as it gets in video game form. It is legitimately turn-based, random dice, all that fun stuff. Hmm. It is yeah, except great. it's not turn-based. No, 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 it's, it uh, is. Under the covers, that is turn-based. It really yeah, is. Under, under the covers, kind of, because, but that's only because you're pausing the gameplay. No, even you without pausing, pause if you watch the sword swings, oh, the sword right, swings right, don't right, mean right. shit. It is legitimately turn-based. Oh, right, mm. right, yeah, yeah. No, no, you're absolutely right with it's that. It's off the D&D Enhanced Edition rule set. It's hmm. so good, and I this is a, a remake. On that. This is this. These are remakes, the enhanced yes. edition. They are not the originals. So they've gone back through, made everything nice and pretty, added a bunch of new content, uh, and then kind of fixed a bunch of bugs and glitches that plagued the game before. So if you were a big fan of Boulder's Gate in the past, or really want to try like a classic RPG, that's yes. that's that's one you should really get your hands on. I have played the original and the remake, and it is fantastic. It is just great. They made it adapt to 1080, modern monitors, beautiful. And cell phones. Uh, you can get it for your mobile phone, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that would be a bitch. Just calling it right now. Along, <laughs> along with San Andreas. I mean, it, it wasn't so yeah. bad. In, I mean, it wasn't so bad when I played it. I mean, if you're playing on a bigger tablet, it's great because you can manage every one. It's built for a tablet. All your selections here, your windows pop up here. It looks like a tablet game. But you see, I control click to like say this guy and this guy go here and then I zone these two out where I can't click and drag. I actually have mm. to like there's people in the middle because I got to get my mage and ranger out of there while sending my fucking cleric and paladin up. All right. Well, I guess I'm not as MLG as you. <laughs> <laughs> I just pause it. Move guy one to, to square two and guy two to square three and then I unpause it. And watch it all go down. There you go. Bleed. No. <laughs> but with that, I think that's all we really got for you guys this week. Um, so uh, you can always tweet at us. Let us know what you think. Give us some suggestions on shit you want us to talk about or games you want us to trash because, you know, we like to trash what everyone loves. You can uh, tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. Um, if you're watching live, you can check out our YouTube at 72 Pin Connector. And if you stumbled upon our 72 Pin Connector YouTube, and you would really like to get on the action in the chat and a little more interactive, you could always watch us at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday night. And with that, until next week, game on. Bye. 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 Bye.